China launched its third batch of low-Earth orbit, or LEO, internet satellites for a constellation called Qianfang. Just the very beginnings of China's bid to do something that would be competitive with Starlink. In the vast and silent corridors of low-Earth orbit, a new competition is unfolding. One that could shape not just the future of the internet, but the future of global power. While Elon Musk's Starlink has raced ahead with its satellite internet empire, China has quietly launched a rival strategy. It's called Xianfan. Thousand sales, it's massive, and it's only just begun. This is not a tech war fought with tweets and press releases. It's a geopolitical arms race disguised as telecom infrastructure. China is not just launching satellites, it's launching a new chapter in digital sovereignty, space dominance, and information control. Starlink may have lit the fuse, but Chenfan might be what brings the real fire. Why China decided to build its own internet in space. The logic is simple. Starlink is American. Its satellites beam uncensored internet across national borders, piercing the Great Firewall, threatening to undermine one of the core tools of control used by the Chinese Communist Party. In a world where information is power depending on a foreign satellite network, especially one owned by Elon Musk, poses a national risk. Then came Ukraine. When Starlink allowed Ukrainian forces to coordinate drone strikes in real time, the world saw just how much of a game-changer space-based internet could be. China saw it too. If Starlink could tip the balance in a war, what would happen if China didn't have its own equivalent in a future conflict? The answer was clear. Build fast and build big. There's another layer to this. Over 900 million people in China are online, but nearly 400 million are not. That makes China the second largest offline population in the world after India. The domestic demand for broadband in rural, mountainous, or hard-to-reach areas is enormous. And from China's perspective, those people shouldn't be logging onto the internet through satellites made in Hawthorne, California. They should be connecting through Chinese satellites, ones that speak the same language, enforce the same filters, and fly under the same flag. The constellations that will shape China's space future. Three mega projects are leading the charge, Qianfan, Guowang, and Honghu-3. At the center is Qianfan, also known as Thousand Sails. It's the most advanced constellation so far, aiming to launch over 15,000 satellites by 2030. Backed by the Shanghai government and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Qianfan has already launched its first 90 satellites and aims to reach 648 by the end of 2025. These satellites are small, flat panel, high-throughput machines designed to operate in Ku, Q, and V bands, the same bands used by high-speed internet providers. Guowang, or National Network, is even more ambitious. 13,000 satellites planned. It's fully state-owned and was greenlit to secure ITU spectrum rights. First satellites were launched in 2024, with more trickling in throughout 2025. This is China's flagship space internet constellation, centrally planned and operated by China Satellite Network Group. Think of it as Starlink, but built by a government rather than a tech billionaire. Honghu-3, the third horse in the race, is a different breed. It's led by Hongqing Technology, a private startup with close ties to commercial rocket company Landspace. Its plan, 10,000 satellites. Its strategy, target emerging markets, develop cutting-edge propulsion systems, and be flexible where state projects can't. It hasn't launched any yet, but factories are being built, and the ITU paperwork is already filed. Put them all together, and China is eyeing a total of 38,000-plus satellites in orbit, a number that could rival or even surpass Starlink's 42,000 satellite ambition. If all goes according to plan, by 2030, the skies above our heads may host two digital empires, one American, one Chinese. How they're building it. Launching tens of thousands of satellites is not just a logistical challenge. It's a feat of industrial coordination. 
To meet the timeline, China is overhauling its launch ecosystem. Rockets like the Long March 6A and 8A are becoming workhorses. The Long March 6A can carry 18 Tianfan satellites in one go, and it's already done so five times. The newer Long March 8A, launched from China's new commercial spaceport on Hainan Island, is designed for high-cadence launches. It can carry larger payloads and is expected to deploy bulk batches of Guo Wang and Xianfan satellites in the years to come. On the factory floor, companies like Genesat are building satellite production lines modeled after SpaceX's approach. Think assembly lines, standard components, modular designs. The idea is speed. Build fast, test fast, launch fast. Satellites don't need to be perfect. They just need to be cheap, replaceable, and good enough to work in a constellation. China is also investing in launch pads and logistics. Its new launch site in Hainan is optimized for commercial traffic, with multiple pads and facilities built for parallel processing. Add to that the rise of private rocket companies like Landspace, Galactic Energy, and Space Pioneer. And it becomes clear, this isn't just a state project, it's a national movement. Starlink vs. Kenfan, two visions, one orbit. Starlink and Qianfan are cut from different cloth. Starlink is private, open, and fast. Qianfan is state-backed, filtered, and strategic. But their goals are the same. Dominate the low-Earth orbit broadband market. Starlink is years ahead. 7,000-plus satellites launched, 5 million customers, real-time drone coordination on the battlefield. But China is catching up. Its satellites are being launched at increasing frequency. Its rockets are getting bigger. Its factories are running longer hours. And unlike Starlink, China isn't trying to make money right away. It's playing the long game. In the near term, Qianfan may serve as a national intranet, providing broadband to remote provinces and belt and road partners. But the real ambition is global. China wants its system to be the satellite internet provider of choice in Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and even parts of South America. Places where Starlink is expensive, geopolitically unwelcome, or just unavailable. The Real Power Play – Information Control and Digital Diplomacy China's satellite push is not just about connecting people, it's about controlling the connection. With its own constellation, China can export censorship, extend its great firewall into partner nations, and build loyalty through infrastructure. Just as Huawei dominates 4G infrastructure in Africa, Xianfan could dominate the next wave of connectivity from space. This isn't conspiracy, it's strategy. Chinese officials have stated openly that whoever builds the space internet will influence global narratives. If Starlink represents the open internet, China's constellation represents the controlled one. And in countries where governments prefer surveillance over freedom, the appeal is obvious. Belt and road countries are already being courted. Ground stations are being planned. Agreements are being signed. This isn't just a tech rollout, it's digital diplomacy. The risks no one wants to talk about. But not everything is smooth in orbit. The more satellites we launch, the greater the risk of disaster. Space is becoming crowded. One mistake, one collision, could trigger a chain reaction known as the Kessler Syndrome, rendering parts of orbit unusable for generations. China is aware of this. Some of its satellite launches have already left debris in orbit. Others failed to reach their intended altitude. Starlink isn't innocent either. It's had dozens of failed satellites and near misses. But the problem is systemic. No one is really in charge of traffic control in space. There are no stoplights, no air traffic controllers, just thousands of machines whizzing by at 17,000 miles per hour. Then there's the security concern. A satellite network can be hacked. A network like Qianfan could be militarized. It could be used to jam communications, spy on adversaries, or deny access to rivals. And if war breaks out, these satellites become targets. Blowing up a satellite creates a cloud of debris. Blowing up 10, you've just killed the sky. Will China catch up? 
The short answer, yes. The long answer, it depends. China has the money, the manpower, and the motivation. What it lacks is time. Starlink isn't slowing down. Amazon's Project Kuiper is entering the race. Europe is building Iris squared. If China wants to lead, it has to do more than catch up. It has to leap. But here's the thing. China doesn't have to beat Starlink in America. It doesn't even have to beat it in Europe. It just has to dominate in the regions where infrastructure is thin, alliances are flexible, and the hunger for connectivity outweighs concerns about censorship. The sky belongs to no one until it does. We often talk about the internet as something that lives underground, in cables and routers and data centers. But the new internet, it's in the sky. And the nation that controls the sky controls the signal. That's what's really happening here. Not a tech rivalry, not a commercial race, but a reshaping of how the world goes online, who sets the rules and whose values ride on the frequencies above our heads. Starlink was first, but Qian Fan is coming. Thousands of satellites, billions in funding, a digital iron curtain that's rising, not falling across the globe. And in the next decade, the battle for Earth's orbit might decide more than just who connects. It might decide who commands.